Thank you. Nice sweater. Thanks, DJ. <laughs> the hat, not so much. Though. I like the hat. Fire away, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. DJ, what, uh, what did you see the most on tape that you can do better in the run game this week against Cincy than what the issues were that presented themselves against Indianapolis? Oh, I think being gap sound, tackling. Um, it's all basic football things, and uh, not trying to do too much. Uh, I think it can, they all kind of fall into those categories. Do you feel like you need to do too too much here with all the injuries in the secondary and you know replacing guys? Oh no, no, and that's the thing is uh, understanding that, like I've said countless times, is that everybody here is in the same meetings, everybody's at the same walkthroughs, practice. Uh, it's all about just trusting and believing that um, guys are going to be where they're supposed to be, and you don't have to do too much. The plays are going to make themselves. So there were some uh, comments made, I guess, in your production meeting from you to Rich Eyes and you repeated on the air yesterday. I just want to give you a chance to clarify what you were talking about in terms of practice habits and, and for guys like that. Yeah, I mean, I referred to myself as when I was a young player, um, just learning how to practice and uh, how to apply yourself in the practice field. And it wasn't attacking anybody. It was a general statement of, as a leader on this team, I feel obligated to uh, show people and with my actions how to practice and uh, it was not taking anything away from guys not practicing so I'm not sure how that happened but uh, it is what it is uh, we move on when you look at how this team practices I mean do you feel like everybody is, is holding the standard or following your lead and example and following your actions I mean yeah and it's not my standard it's it's nothing that I'm doing it's what's set before me and it's about continually getting better. If we're satisfied with what we're doing, then we're wrong. We need to continue to be striving to be better. I noticed you and Tom were kind of having a long conversation as you walked off the field Saturday after the game. I mean, what are you guys discussing it at that point? Is it more review, is it forward thinking? I, I don't remember, honestly. TJ, what looks different about the Bengals this time around than last time? I think they're running the ball pretty efficiently. Uh, I think the quarterback is still playing some really good football. I think they said Chase is out, so that might be a little different. Um, but overall, a physical football team that uh, is going to want to run the ball. 28 is playing really well. 30 has also come along. Uh, the screen game has been very active for them. So it's going to be a challenge for us. TJ, what's it to the player of who Pat Peterson is uh, to be able to move? It's awesome uh, for a guy like that to just jump into the role, have no complaints about it, true team player, um, the guy that's going to be a Hall of Famer at corner, uh, move back to safety, be a team player. It was funny to see him in the shoulder pads this week, but that's just the mentality that he has. Um, we're going to need him to make some big plays for us, and I'm excited to see him in the box. What's the challenge of losing, obviously, I mean, Pat P sliding over, but what's the challenge of losing not just one starting safety, but two? And, and what do you lack when Casey and Mika aren't on the field? Yeah, it's difficult. Uh, anytime you lose anybody, it's difficult. Uh, but a, a core defender who is vocal, uh, it, it makes things a little bit more tough, especially when we're going to be at home here. Hand signals are going to be huge. Uh, the communication aspect of things is the defense. I feel like I repeat myself every week just because of the situation we've been in with losing guys. But uh, like I said, the guys that have been here uh, will continue to educate and uh, help the guys that are stepping into those roles uh, get it, get that job as fluidly as possible. And we're gonna we're gonna play sound defense, and that's what it's gonna take to win football games. For you and Alex, what's the best counter to? offenses that are trying to neutralize your pass rush with the quick game? I mean, you can get your hands up. Um, there's, a, there's a myriad of different things you can do. Uh, but hey, at the end of the day, the quarterback's not always going to be able to sit there and, and get the ball out super quick. Uh, we have to make him pay for the times that he doesn't. TJ, you guys will be on your third starting quarterback of the month. What do you appreciate about the way Mason has handled his situation? What can he bring to your team? All right. I mean, the guy goes out there and does his every single warm-up routine that he's done since he's been here. He's acted like he's uh, the starter as far as how he practices, how he approaches the game. Uh, I know he would have loved to get more reps, but he, I don't never saw him complain about it. I'm excited for him to get to show himself again on the big stage and. Um, I know it must be frustrating to put in all the work and not get an opportunity. So for him to get an opportunity would be awesome to see. It's probably the last home game of the year. Um, how much do you guys kind of feel you know, to the fans after the last couple of products that you've done? I'm excited to get back in front of the fans. Uh, I love playing Axure. The fans always go crazy. 
Uh, it's going to take every single one of us, including the fans. So I'm excited to get in front of them and uh, feed off the crowd. Good. When it comes to leadership, like you talked about before, it's always leading by example of what you do on the field and your productivity. Figurative, literally, whatever. Is, it, is there a component of dragging other guys with you, grabbing by the face mask, that, that cliche? Is there an aspect of that that needs to be tapped into? Oh, well, I don't know. Uh, I think if I don't worry about how I'm playing and I start to try to be somebody I'm not, that I'm not giving myself fully to this team on the football field. So uh, I'm always leading in different ways. It doesn't mean that you guys always have to see the way that I'm vocally leading. TJ, they got you on the screen at the very end of the last game. It seems like they've been doing a little bit more of that kind of thing with 30 in the lineup. How do you be vigilant against that? Yeah, it's, uh, as a rushman, obviously the screens are always tough, uh, especially it seems like now there's a lot more of the QB under screens as well. Uh, it, it's difficult too because it's not just one back. Like you said, 30 can do it, but uh, Joe Mixon can also do it. So it's just something we have to be constantly aware of. How are you feeling? Uh, getting there. I uh, feel better than I did. Um, you know, kind of sprung on it at the end of the game. Um, I was just out of it. Um, but, you know, I'm feeling good now. Can be confident for Saturday? Uh, yeah. They cleared me, so I might, I might as well be confident. Was <laughs> there a specific hit or something, or was it just a... Uh, it, it was at the end of uh, the drive, and I kind of just took the double, and I just took the blunt of it uh, on both sides of my head, and then was just not feeling right after that. Uh, checked myself in the protocol. I mean, I checked myself with the doctors, and then they put me in the protocol from there. I know you guys have been doing it every year. I mean, every game pretty much, it seems like. But how difficult will it be in the middle of the field not having your safety in the inside linebacker situation? Well, you know, uh, you know, you look at our situation, and you just say, um, you know, you get dealt certain cards, but you keep playing. Um, you can't run away from it. Um, you know, injuries are a part of the game. Um, Obviously, we like to have Mink, like to have Casey out there. You like to have your inside linebackers, um, but you know, I can't cry about spoiled milk. You know, you, you just you just gotta bounce back and be ready for the group. Uh, I mean, that puts more emphasis on the front to get home. Um, uh, the guys who are in there have to tackle well, uh, and we have to have great communication. With or without the injuries to the safeties and the inside linebackers, what was going wrong up front that they were ripping the holes that they were opening up last week? Um, you know, one, I think penalties were a big factor. Uh, they were able to flip the field a couple times. Um, you know, I think we didn't make them settle for field goals when we had the opportunity. Um, I know we got a, a stop um, a fourth down in the red zone, but, you know, I think we could have done a lot more. Um, and then the run, rushing game, I think, just got on hand. Um, you know, stop them early in the first half, and then the second half they kind of got going um, and waged the war in the second half. Um, can't happen. Where it got out of hand. Yeah. Was that losing one-on-one -on -one battles, or was that like continual schematic things that they were throwing at I, I think the schematics I talk about, it's, I think it's guys not doing the job. Um, knowing when to fill, um, knowing how they're trying to block you, um, when guys pull, uh, how do we adapt at our gaps. Uh, and the double, if two guys stay on me, who's filling in the other gaps. Um, it's a it's a 11 man process. It's not just one guy, two guys. You got to know who's responsible for each gap, play in and play out. Cam, what do you notice that's different with Browning this time around? You know, I think he's just comfortable. Um, you know, it, it was. Uh, you know, I think the thing we learned the first time around was it's not like they're closing the book, the playbook on him. Um, you know, he's got the full range of everything. Um, he feels confident in it. Um, he's spreading the, it out to a lot of people, uh, especially his running backs. You know, I think uh, Mixon uh, and Brown are doing an amazing job. I think since the last time we played, they've got like 12 to 15 balls uh, just out of the backfield. So, you know, we, we got our, our work cut out for us. And I think one play that really sticks out to me from last game, um, we had already had the game in hand, but they got a screen at the end of the game. It was like a 40-yarder, and I, I feel like ever since then, they've just been really featuring the backs in the uh, receiving game. Do you feel like it's different this time? I mean, the last time you played them, you really didn't know anything about him mm -hmm. as a player. Is it different now that there's, well, not only have you played him, but there's four games on tape of him playing? Yeah, you know, there's four games on tape. Um, guys know how to play with him now, um, and they feel comfortable. Uh, you know, we were coming off a game where 
last time we played him, he had only seen the second half of the Baltimore game. So uh, he's definitely more confident. Um, you know, you can build a, a bigger plan because you know what to expect with him a little bit more. But, man, he's doing an amazing job, um, you know, feeding T. Higgins, feeding Jamar Chase, uh, really featuring the tight ends as well. Um, but I definitely, you got to keep your eye on those running backs, um, you know, because last time we played them here, they got off with the running backs. They did an amazing job in that, you know, Mixon, uh, P. Ryan last year, but now it's Chase Brown. So it's it's a multitude of guys, but they get the job done. Have you been around Mason for his whole career? Yeah. How do you feel he's handled his situation? What's the confidence you guys have in him? You know, I think Mason has just gone about his business. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, he's waited his time, um, you know, I know he's dealt with his struggles, but I felt like he's just always battled back. Uh, it's not been a thing where it's more overtly, but um, he's come to work every day and just competed um, and just been ready for when his, his number's called. So um, excited for him. You know, we're going to need him. We're going to need him to step up. Um, and, you know, we just got to take advantage of these opportunities. Kim, I know um, Mike Tomlin talked a little bit about George yesterday and said he meets with him daily. Mm -hmm. As a player, a veteran player, do you feel like you need to talk to him or some of these younger guys about what's going on in here? Yeah, you know, um, I, we've had those talks privately. Um, you know, it's not for me to share them, but, um, you know, growth that needs to take, take place. That's it. Uh, you know, it's not just a George in general. It's everybody. Um, um, there's a way we do things around here. Um, and it's as the group grows, not as one guy goes. And um, when we're losing um, and not getting the job done, uh, it falls on the group. It's not one person. You mentioned the way you guys do things around here. Is it different than the way things were done in 2011 when you got here? Does it feel the same culture-wise and career-wise? Everybody likes to make a big deal about it. But, um, you know, for someone to have a, you know, opinion that doesn't know what's going on in here, I just, I, I kind of laugh at that because um, it's about being with the group, um, understanding that the Steelers are the Steelers because they care about each other, um, and that um, it's not one guy that wins, it's everybody that wins. Um, you know, I know these last three games have not gone the way we want, um, and it's been hard. Um, but you know, it's about your practice habits. It's about um, dedicating your 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 life to this game. Um, and, you know, we can't run away from it. Um, you take care of everybody in this group. But, uh, you know, you got to have those hard times and those hard uh, conversations to make the group grow. What's the confidence level in the locker room right now? Just focus on this game. I think the confidence is just, man, we got to get this losing taste out of our mouth and just get to work. Uh, you know, we understand this is our last home game. Um, and we're trying to make the most out of it. Kim, are you seeing those things you discussed with this group? Mm -hmm. Are you seeing those things you discussed with this group? You know, we could talk about it, but I think it only gets uh, brought to the front forward uh, on Sundays and Saturdays, I guess. Um, but, you know, this game, you're defined by your wins and losses. Um, and when we fall short, you got to stick together. You got to continue to keep fighting for each other. Um, have we fallen short? Yeah. Um, but, you know, it doesn't mean we can't bounce back and be better because of it. Two more. Kim, how do you approach your role as a leader in that process you were talking about? And you know, do you get in with people's faces? Do you pull them aside? And maybe how did you kind of develop the, the, the way that you are? Um, you know, I think it's just having honest conversations. Um, you know, I think it's not running from that situation, understanding that, um, you know, either I'm, you could yell about it and be loud, um, but I think it's just uh, being up front and, um, you know, going from over there. Uh, it's not about embarrassing each other, but it's about saying that, man, we all got to be in this together. It's the group that gets the job done. As a defensive leader, does that message carry the same weight over to the offensive side of the ball? It should. I don't feel like I'm not doing anything different than any other DB in the league right now, but uh, I'm not going to let that alter my game. Uh, I know what I got going on. I feel like I'm doing a good job. And uh, once you start second guessing your ability, you start playing bad. And I'm not going to let that happen. So if I get a flag, it's whatever next play, and we're going to keep working. I mean, did you hear what um, Tyler Boyd said, basically saying he's questioning what's going on in this locker room? Or maybe things are kind of broken. I mean, do you have anything to say about that? Or I don't even know if you heard the quote. No, I didn't. he said that by in this locker room? Well, he was, someone asked him about the George Pickens not blocking, and he kind of went on a something about a it was little indicative about, of yeah. what's going on with the camaraderie in the I locker just, room is the phrase that he used he wouldn't know he's not in the locker room so his opinion really doesn't matter what's the communication been like this week in practice with obviously some different safeties in and out that you haven't played next to 
Uh, it's been good. You know, we've been emphasizing that this whole season of communication, and we got a lot of guys down, a lot of guys to step up. So uh, I feel like we've been doing that good throughout the week, and uh, we'll really find out Saturday. Do you have any anticipation of who's going to be out there with no Minka and no KZ? Uh, no, not really. What do you lose not having KZ? I mean, I know Mink is obviously a huge piece, of it, but you and KZ have a tight relationship. What do you lack when you don't have him on the field? Uh, you just got a, a energy guy. You know, he's uh, he always brings the juice no matter what circumstances in the game. He's going to get you there. He's going to have your back. And uh, definitely, definitely sad that he's not going to be out there. You know, like you said, that's that's my dog right there. So um, hope he comes back and uh, gets the thing rolling. Well, he can only come back if you guys get him back, getting to the playoffs. And has, has anybody talked about that at all in this locker room? Uh, yes and no. We're really mainly focused on this game we got coming up right now. We're not trying to focus on anything else but this game. Do you feel like you want to bring more energy, or is there somebody that you guys now look to to be that energy person in the secondary? Uh, we all just got to have that juice. You know, um, like Casey, Casey always bringing that energy, but with him gone, we all got to bring that up in the room, and I feel like we're doing a great job at that, and uh, we all bring that morale up. So to follow up on Rich's question, then, that uh, you, is it your belief that the camaraderie in the locker room is strong and that there's, he's got a misread on the whole situation? Yeah, I feel like he got a misread on the whole situation. Like I said, he's not in the locker room, so he doesn't know what's going on in the locker room. It's just all outside. So, um, yeah, that's all I have to say on that. You talk about want to play your game. Do you pride yourself in being a physical? Do you like being a physical corner, known to that way? Is that the way you like to – I don't know, intimidation is the right word, but – against receivers? I mean, I want to be known as an all-around corner, but uh, if they come with this physical and, and everything like that, I really don't. I mean, I play football at the end of the day. I really don't care what they say. I just try to get my job done and uh, and do it at a high level. So. Have, you, have you been in touch with KZ since last night when that suspension was upheld? Did you talk to him at all? Yeah, I talked to him a little bit. He's doing good. Yeah, he's doing all right. He can be around the team at all. Or is he more just like out? I don't even know. Yeah, uh, it's not my thing to say. Thanks, Joey. Thank you.